contract of agency what do we mean by agency and how does this agency is being created let's understand first the meaning of agency what do we mean by contract of agency when we are saying agency so agency can be defined as the relationship between two persons wherein a person has the authority to act on behalf of another bind him or her into a legal relationship with the third party so if i am acting on behalf of you that makes a relationship of agency between you and me i become your agent and you become the principal for me there are two parties we call them principal and agent so it's simple wherein one party has the authority to act on behalf of another and based on that action if i can bind third parties that yes this is what you are supposed to do that is what we mean by agency right it's simple in a contract of agency the agent is not just the bridge between the principal and the third party but he can also make the principal answerable for the acts performed by him so if i'm doing something on behalf of you that means you are responsible for those things you are answerable for those things because i'm not doing on my personal capacity those are the things i'm doing for you all right so that is simple here it must be noted that while the agent is acting for the principal he works in the capacity of principal so i work in your capacity whatever you can do whatever you uh, will get as a right or as a liability whatever it is whether it is a benefit or a sacrifice whatever i am getting it's yours so benefit as well as the uh, liability or what we can call it as you are also answerable to the third party because i am acting on your capacity contract of agency is based on the fact that one person cannot perform all the transactions and so he can appoint another to perform or act on his behalf that is how simple it is like i cannot do everything as the example goes you cannot do everything so you want certain things me to do on your behalf that is how we establish a relationship of agency i become your agent you become my principal but what do we mean by principal so according to section 182 the person for whom such act is done or who is so represented is called the principal so if i am doing things for you you are my principal that is how simple it is for whom it is done who is the ultimate authority that authority is nothing but your principal therefore the person who has delegated his authority will be the person uh, will be the person as principal any person who employs another person to perform an act and who is being represented by another person is dealing with a third party is the principal so whoever is sitting at the top whoever wants somebody else to do their job is the principal and the person who does this job is called as an agent what do we mean by agent the indian contract act 1872 defines an agent in section 182 as a person employed to do any act for another or to represent another in de dealing with third person so i am doing your work i become your agent and you have appointed me as an agent so you are my principal right a person employed by the principal to act on his behalf represent him to dealings with the third party and also to bring him into a contractual relationship with the third party is called as an agent simple the person who gives the power is principal and the person to whom the power is given is the agent so what are the different essentials of a contract of agency let's look into it the relationship of an agency is based upon a contract yes simple there is a contract between you and me as a principal and an agent so there is a contract the contract may be either express or implied both the ways it is possible it's just if if there is an express contract by oral or written that is a contract but even if by your behavior and by my behavior it is visible to the third people third parties that you know there is an agency that that also means a contract there should be an appointment of an agent by the principal yes until and unless you are approving it it does not i do not, do not become your agent it's the principal who decides to give authority or not the person employing the agent must himself have legal capacity or to be competent to do the act for which he employs the agent again simple the principal should conder authority on the agent to act for him again the same thing we are reiterating again the person employing the agent must himself have legal capacity if i am not you know in a position to uh, uh, do my own act how can i appoint somebody else to do that same thing that is why the capacity again how do we define the, if there is a capacity to contract or not again go back to the you know previous to previous class i think it was third or fourth session where we have already recorded this thing where we have already mentioned this thing who are the parties competent to contract who are those parties persons of sound mind person who are not disqualified by law and person who have attained the age of majority so if i fall under those categories then only i can appoint somebody as an agent or i am acting as an agent for you so you must be capable of entering into a contract then only i can act on your behalf otherwise it won't work right 
the principal should confer authority to act on yes if no authority that does not mean any you know kind of relationship relationship of the agency is based on confidence between the principal and the agent yes if you don't have confidence if i don't have confidence on you it's not going to work so it's between again you and me the kind of relationship we are sharing a contract of agency requires no consideration yes again th this is an exception we have seen contract requires a consideration without consideration there is no contract no consideration no contract we have seen but it was one of the what exceptions to the law as to no contract no consideration no contract but in agency without even consideration contract is there right so that is again one more thing what what does it mean we are going to study in this session itself so now let's look into what are the different characteristics of agency how does it look like how do we identify if there is an agency or not based on these consideration or based on these features or these are the outcomes we can say so first we are saying legal binding the crux of the contract of agency is that the principal is legally bound by the acts performed by the agent whatever agent does ultimately the principal is responsible for all those things right that is what we mean by legal binding it is even if principal is not doing those things but since principal has given authority to the agent to do those things on his behalf so whatever agent does on those grounds principal will also be liable or legally bound consideration is not mandatory yes just now we have seen there is no legal requirement of consideration to support the relationship between the principal and the agent you cannot deny that there was no consideration so i do not become the agent or i do not become the principal for whatever act my agent has done it does not require it is not required does not require that there should be a consideration in the contract of agency so without a uh, consideration also agency is well and fine right next it is capacity of principal yes one who is legally competent to contract is eligible to employ an agent if the person himself is not competent to enter into a contract cannot appoint anybody as an agent to do those things so that is she should have attained the age of 18 years and of sound mind right and should not be disqualified by law as well so this again we have seen then authority to contract authority to contract is the basic requirement to become an agent if i do not give you any authority to do anything on my behalf you do not become my agent if you haven't given any authority to do anything on your behalf i do not become your agent right that is how simple it is authority should be given from the principal so a minor can also act as an agent though he is not having the capacity agent can act right because agent is not bound by anything whatever a minor does minor is not bound because minor is an agent but principal should be major principal will be bound so it does not require that you know a, 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 same thing person uh, as a capacity of contract we are not looking into towards the agent but we are looking into the capacity of the principal so agent does not require anything because agent is not getting bound by anything it is the principal who is getting so principal should be competent to contract however he can have the authority to act as an agent yes minor can be agent can be an agent this is an example sometimes it is asked so i'm not sure which exam you are preparing for or in general sense uh, it is a general knowledge question that a minor can be an agent and we are saying that you know a minor can act whatever exam you are preparing for this this question is asked many a times so in most of the exams whether it is your ca cs or you're preparing for cma or your college exam your university exam or you're preparing for any kind of public exam or you even if you're studying for the general knowledge but this is something important that a minor though minor cannot enter into a contract but minor can be an agent right that is one exception again to what we, we have studied as to capacity of a contract this is due to the fact that an agent initiates a contractual relationship amidst the principal and a third party and so the contractual capacity of the agent is irrelevant getting the point because whatever agent does with a third party ultimately the third party is getting connected to the principal agent is just a connecting ground we can say agent does not have anything as any responsibility or liability towards the third party so it is between the principal and the third party so agent is just a connecting person we can say it is the bridge so for the bridge there is no as such what we can say as you know that it should be major only a minor can also be an agent so just remember this thing then who may be an agent again in the same fashion according to section 184 the person who has attained the age of majority and has a sound mind can become an agent but why we are saying a sound a C. again the same thing will apply because even if we are saying agent is a connecting ground between 
principal and third party but agent is also responsible to principal to some extent principal is responsible to the third party but again there is a contract between principal and agent also so agent will also be responsible to the principal agent will not be responsible to the third party because agent is acting on behalf of the principal so principal is responsible to the third party but agent has certain duties has certain responsibilities towards the principal so agent should also be competent to contract but minor is an exception given over here so that is what we are looking into but there are certain benefits like you cannot hold minor as responsible for anything so even though things are allowed but still we are looking into in general agent should also be competent to contract how do we know that section 184 is again saying uh, like 184 is saying it should be person uh, competent to contract but we are looking into attain the age of maturity and has a sound mind can become an agent a sound mind and a mature age is a necessary because an agent has to be answerable to the principal that is the basic idea that even if agent is not answerable to the third party but agent is somehow answerable to somebody that, and that somebody happens to be the principal because you are acting on that somebody's behalf right next who is sub agent sub agent is again something really interesting it as the name suggests sub agent means agent of an agent but ultimately sub agent is also responsible to the principal because you're not agent somehow it happens to be it looks like you know agent becomes a principal but what if agent is not appointing somebody as a as an agent but as a sub agent so we need to un uh, understand the conditions of sub agent an agent may sometimes delegate the duty that has been delegated to him by the principal to somebody else right whatever duties i have got from you if i delegate those duties to somebody else that somebody else would become a sub agent ordinarily an agent cannot delegate the duty he is supposed to perform himself to another person except in particular circumstances where he must out of necessity do so section 191 of the indian contract act 1872 defines a sub agent to be a person employed by and acting under the control of the original agent in the business of the agency so something you ask me to do generally i cannot do that i don't have an authority to appoint somebody as a sub agent for you you should be doing that but some work you have given to me and there is a necessity there is certain ground that i cannot perform that work but it is required to be performed by me so i delegate that authority to somebody else to do it then in those situations that somebody else would become a sub agent in this situation of agency right that is this situation now we are looking into how does the agency is being created how does it get created what is the provisions of creation of agency so let's just try to understand creation of agency first it is express agency simple express agency is the agency where there is an express contract one can enter into a contract of agency through an express contract that is oral or written in a written contract of agency the power of attorney is transferred in the name of the agent conferring him the authority and power to act on behalf of the principal subject to the terms and conditions specified in the contract when the pur purpose of creation of agency is to transfer the immovable property it is required to be registered so registration is also required it express means oral or written so it is not mandatory to have an oral or written but when it is written we call it as power of attorney transfer of power of attorney and if that is something related to immovable property so it, at that time it is required to be registered as well but it can be express express means oral also next is implied implied means no oral but as such from the behavior from the conduct of the parties it is visible that there is an agency when something is not directly or clearly stated it is said to be implied therefore the implied agency is created by way of conduct the situation of the parties that is the principal and agent or necessity of the case right that is there next it is agency by estoppel estoppel is something again similar by the behavior itself without implying also implied means something without express but we are going to the next step that is by estoppel estoppel again means public behavior something we can say suppose a person by his conduct in forms another person that a particular person is his agent and the person who is signified as an agent is present and hearing at the time when it is intimated now if the third person enters into a contract with that person thinking that he is the agent this is the case of agency by estoppel where the agent will be precluded from the refusal refusing his authority so if i tell those people like if you tell somebody that i am your agent even i am not your agent but that somebody believes that i am your agent and if there is an agreement you cannot deny that this guy is not my agent because you, you have said something and i did not deny i was present there i have heard this thing and the third party is believing all this behavior between you and me and 
whatever has happened so by behavior itself by stopple itself by the conduct itself it is visible that there is an agency that is also means agency by stopple this is again implied agency only one of the aspect of implied but one more example of implied agency is when we can say wife as an agent does wife become an agent let's look into it when a legally married couple lives together the wife is supposed again lives together is something which is there if they are not living we cannot say if wife is living somewhere else my husband is living somewhere else we cannot say and nowadays living relationship is also something there that is why it is important to understand married couple lives together right Mar they should be living together and they should be legally married also the wife is supposed to have the authority of his husband to pledge his credit on the be on behalf of wife can always buy certain things and can say that my husband would pay husband cannot deny that when in order to afford the basic necessities of life it is only this uh, agent uh, relationship this uh, relationship of agency between husband and wife acts only in case of basic necessities of life and those basic necessities should be according to their standard of living if wife goes and buys some you know fancy car and says my husband would pay and the shopkeeper sells it out later on the shopkeeper cannot held the husband being responsible as there is no authority it depends upon the standard of living and for the basic necessities of life for you know again three four conditions are there one they should be legally married they should be living together and wife should be buying things to afford the basic necessities and it should be according to their standard of living right but again for this also there are certain exceptions when this won't work so let's look into it exceptions to wife as an agent when wife cannot be an agent when it has certain exceptions if the husband proves that he has explicitly warned the dealer not to give the goods on credit to his wife if the husband has already made it clear to the third party or the dealer not to give then of course you have been warned he has explicitly forbidden his spouse to pledge his cre cre credit even if the wife has been you know specifically forbidden explicitly if i uh, told my wife that you cannot buy on my behalf does it does not make her my agent simple because i have been specifically forbidding her for doing those things so that also makes some sense when he has already supplied the pension stuff in the sufficient quantity to his wife so we are talking about basic necessities and those basic necessities are already supplied in that situation when husband has already supplied those basic necessities wife cannot go for the same thing again and again in sufficient quantity that is also important do things are supplied but not in sufficient quantity you cannot say it and when he is providing sufficient allowance to his wife even if the necessities are not supplied but husband is supplying money as allowance to his wife to you know get those things so even if i am giving money to my wife and still my wife is going and buying things on credit saying my name that does not make the relationship between agent and principal in this situation as well otherwise it would be right so this is again something you know something understand understandable something very normal next is agency of necessity now this is again something by conduct itself there may be certain circumstances that compel the parties to enter into a contract of agency now what are those situations where they are compelled suppose a person is interested with property or goods of another person he is obligated to take a reasonable care of it as well as to incur necessary expenses so as to preserve and protect such property so if i am taking care of your property so some things certain things happen if something goes wrong i need to maybe some maintenance some repair work maybe i am required to do so if i am doing those things ultimately i will recover all those things from you because i am doing those things to your property so i become your agent one classic example is like a tenant living in a property where if something goes wrong to the property and landlord is not doing any repairs but tenant does repair the, those things so tenant can ultimately recover the same money from the landlord how because we can say that tenant was acting on behalf of landlord because landlord even if landlord agrees or not because the changes that have been made to the property the property ultimately belongs to the landlord so again that is that is also something there that is an agency for necessity it is necessary life i have to stay as a tenant i have to stay, stay in the property so if the door is broken i need to repair get the re door repaired if the landlord is not repairing it i will get it repaired but ultimately i can deduct the amount from my rent why because i did it on behalf of my principal as a landlord as an agent i perform those things right that is again one example of agency by uh, what you can say implied 
now next is agency by ratification ratification means saying okay things which have already been done can also be ratified later on so agency can also be created by ensuring ratification when a person who does not have any authority claims to act as an agent or a legally employed agent performs an act which is beyond his authority then the principal is not legally bound by the contract entered into on his behalf what is it if something agent does what an agent is not supposed to do if the agent ha does not have any authority to do those, those things but still the agent does so principal is not responsible for those things but principal becomes responsible if principal says okay however he may ratify the act performed by the agent and accept the liability this results in an agency by ratification in such a case the parties that is the principal and the agent will be in the same position if the acts were performed with authority so if agent does something without authority but later on principal accepts it then it will be assumed that you know there was an authority before doing the act itself right so principal should be taking care of it before you know ratifying things right agency by operation of law now what does it mean by operation of law means if the law says that you are principal and agent that makes you a principal and agent by simple it is right what is an example the example is of partnership in partnership it is believed that any partner is an agent of the partnership firm it is not because the partners have agree, uh, entered into a contract of agency it is because the law says so the indian partnership act says so that any partner is an agent of the partnership firm so that makes a contract of agency between partners and partnership firms right that is agency by operation of law now one very last aspect of contract of agency is something called as privity of contract what is privity of contract here privity of contract means that no right is conferred or obligations are imposed on any person who is not a party to the contract what does it mean this means that the party to contract are entitled to such other to uh, see sorry this means that the party to contract are entitled to sue each other to enforce the rights or claim damages but prevents others from doing so so it means that somebody who is not a party to the contract cannot do so things but at certain times it happens so in a contract of agency the agent has to establish privity of contract amidst the principal and the third party so we generally it is said that you know third party cannot indulge into certain things but here what happens is principal is somebody separate the act or whatever is done the deals are done between agent and third party but here principal is something outsider but still it is well and fine because agent is doing certain things on behalf of principal right that is what we mean by privity of contract we say generally that you know third parties cannot sue but here it is possible even if third party is there but because of the contract of agency that is possible that is well and fine